First up, number six, Steve Garvey is a 10-time All-Star with the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres. He was the National League MVP in 1974, two-time NLCS MVP, four-time Golden Glove Award winner, nearly a 300 lifetime batting average. He should be in the Hall of Fame, frankly, but now he wants to be a United States Senator, running for the seat vacated by the passing of Dianne Feinstein, and he's running as a Republican. We talked with him this week and started out by asking about his pledge at the age of 75 to seek just one term in office to a job where clout is based on seniority. Part of the process of deciding to run for the U.S. Senate was Number one, am I physically and, and, and mentally strong enough to go six years? And I think I am. Um, do I have the will to do what it takes to represent the state of, of California, to get up to bat every day for the people, um, to change uh, this one-party state and the suppression of, of voices to finally be that unifier that steps up uh, with a recognizable loud voice, a new voice, new ideas that can maybe change things. This state has never been better than when we had the Reagans and the Wilsons and the Duke Magians uh, and the left leaders coming together uh, for what's best for the people. And that's why I'm running. At this time, uh, I woke up back in March and I said, is there anybody I can get behind? And there wasn't. Because good men and women who could represent the state have been told you can't win in the state if you have a moderate conservative voice. So do I think I can be active and, and make a difference in the, in the next six years? Absolutely. Right. So it is a one-party state. And I'm not going to ask you if you're going to vote for Donald Trump uh, in this next election. But, but, le but let me ask you about um, your past votes for Donald Trump. In 2016, he lost this state to Hillary Clinton by over 4 million votes. Uh, four years later, uh, he lost to Joe Biden by over 5 million votes. I mean, that's millions of people in California. There are a lot of people who say, listen, I like Steve Garvey, but I, I had to make a decision about, about Donald Trump, and there is no way I was going to support that man for president. And the fact that he supported him twice makes me wonder, this is not my guy for the Senate. He doesn't share my values. How do you respond to that? Well, I think I share the values of the people of California in this country. The single greatest currency we have is the opportunity to vote. And I take it personally, and I've done that all through my life, all through my voting life. And I, I voted for Reagan, and I voted for Bill Bradley, and people who th I thought were the, were the best person for the job. So, and I get this question a lot. And they ask me, why did you vote for him the first time? I said, his opponent the first time looked down at the people of this country and call them names. And why anybody would vote for somebody who is looking at the, down at the people that, that that person would represent. So I thought he was the best person for the job. The second time, um, the current president uh, was sequestered in the basement, came out only in fixed environments with fixed questions. And I always say, if that was President Reagan, I wouldn't have voted for him. So twice I thought, I voted for the person I thought was best for the job against the person he was running against. And I'll make my decision this time. I think, I think all of us that, that love the currency of a vote will take time and think out. When you get down to two people, then you have to make a decision for yourself, for your family, for your future. And it's not always easy. Right. So the premise of my question is what Adam Schiff is focused on. And that is you look at the field in the primary and you try to drag with you to the fall election, an opponent you know you can beat. So Adam Schiff talks about Steve Garvey being a MAGA Republican in hopes that he'll get enough Republican votes so you're his opponent in the fall. He thinks he can beat the others. He knows he can beat you. Well, I've always said don't mistake kindness for weakness. Don't mistake somebody who's got common sense and compassion and a consensus builder like I am. Um, you know, he's only running for half the people. I'm running for all the people of California. And I think that that's the difference in my ideology and, and what he's representing. Because he's representing a quest for power. I'm representing somebody who every day is going to get up for the people of California, the hardworking people. So I hope he does underestimate me. A lot of people have, um, and I think they regret it. Let's talk about a, a 
potential floor votes. Should there be any preconditions to the U.S. sending aid to Israel uh, in their war against Hamas? I think so I, I think there should always be oversight and accountability. I think that's important. Um, and it, like in the case of Ukraine, the same thing. We decided to support them uh, as an ally. Uh, we've, we've funded them. We provide them with uh, goods and, and services. Uh, but it's the same way. Accountability is very, very important. And uh, we need to have that. But we steadfast. We are the, the champions for democracy around the world. The world looks at us. They look at strengths and weakness. And our strength is protecting democracy and standing up for our allies. The president was asked, will the United States support Taiwan if it's uh, invaded by China? And he said, yes, that's, we have an obligation to do that. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I believe, again, in not having information like you know, my opponents have or the president have. But I think that it's a very similar situation in terms of support. What does that support entail? Uh, it could be um, financial support. It could be uh, some type of, of non-boots-on-the-ground support. Uh, but that's to be determined. I mean, we, but we are on theaters around the world. Uh, never have we been uh, spread this thin. Um, I personally think that we, uh, if we don't have the strongest possible military deterrent, uh, then we aren't the country that people are going to look up to. So I think we always have to look at the broad picture of the amount of money we're spending and the amount of equipment and, and military equipment we're sending around the world and make sure that it's not making us weaker. Um, homelessness is not something, I mean, you, as a senator, you can help allocate money. And there's housing and urban development, which is a federal agency. Uh, but, but a senator can have some contribution on that issue. What percentage of those on the street do you believe are there for economic reasons? Um, and what percentage of them do you believe are there because they are, suffer from mental illness or drug addiction or both? I think they probably were driven there by economic constraints, whatever it is. The fellow I talked to when I did a, a, a homeless tour recently uh, said that he lost his job. He was barely making it through each month, and the loss of his job caused a spiral. And he turned to drugs, and all of a sudden he was on the streets. And then he's been there for five years. So you have to think, probably driven by, by personal needs in the economy, but then once he got there, it was compounded by, by the drugs, which, which then stimulates the mental illness. And we, I think any politician, and I'm up against career politicians, that seem to put housing first, they don't really understand the problem. And it starts from the head down. It starts with mental illness. So let's get the, let's get the drugs off the streets. Let's get the cartels off the streets and then start to, to process them a way to get back into society so that they feel that they, they can get back to a life that, which they can be part of and contribute to. To summarize this campaign, there's not much time left, um, and, and what it has meant to you and um, what you're hoping voters will think of when they, when they cast a ballot. Well, I've had this wonderful life, you know, over 50 years being a citizen of, of uh, California, working and playing. You know, when you go to work with 30,000 people, it's, uh, it's a daunting task, but uh, uh, you learn a lot about people. Uh, and then at my age, I decided maybe the ultimate, um, ultimate statement for who I am and what I believe in would be to represent the people of, of California as their next duly elected senator. I think there's a, there's a quiet realization in this state that now we have somebody that will really have our voice. And we, the people, need to tell Washington what to do, and I think Steve can do that.